more than three years, I've spoken about uh, the new frontier. This is not a partisan term, and it's not the exclusive property of Republicans or Democrats. It refers instead to this nation's place in history, to the fact that we do stand on the edge of a great new era, filled with both crisis and opportunity, an era to be characterized by achievement and by challenge. It is an era which calls for action and for the best efforts of all those who would test the unknown and the uncertain in every phase of human endeavor. It is a time for pathfinders and pioneers. I have come to Texas today to salute an outstanding group of pioneers. The man who manned the Brooks Air Force Base School of Aerospace Medicine and the Aerospace Medical Center. Next month, when the United States of America fires the largest booster in the history of the world into space for the first time, giving us the lead, fires the largest payroll, payload into space, giving us the lead, it will be the largest payroll too. You should know that better than Houston. In 1990, your son, daughters, grandsons, and grandchildren will be applying to the colleges of this state in a number three times what they do today. Our airports will serve five times as many passenger miles. We will need housing for a hundred million more people and many times more doctors and engineers and technicians than we are presently producing. That is why we're trying to do more in these areas. As in the 30s, Albert Thomas and Franklin Roosevelt and others did those things which make it possible for not only Texas, but the entire United States to prosper and grow as we do in the 1960s. In 1990, the age of space will be entering its second phase. And our hopes in it to preserve the peace, to make sure that in this great new sea, as on earth, the United States is second to none. We would like to live as, as we once lived, but history will not permit it. The communist balance of power is still uh, strong. The balance of power is still on the side of freedom. We are still the keystone and the arch of freedom, and I think we'll continue to do as we have done in our past, our duty. I'm confident, as I look uh, to the future, that our chances for security, our chances for peace, are better than they've been in the past. And the reason is because we're stronger. And with that strength is a determination to not only maintain the peace, but also the vital interest of the United States to that great cause, Texas and the United States are committed. Thank you.
to be made available to the people behind the Iron Curtain. And I believe you, Paul. We were passed that bill two years ago. We would have passed that bill two years ago. But it failed by one vote in the Senate when the president withdrew his support on the day the bill was coming up to vote. That's how it forms the office of the presidency is. He shall determine what shall be our policy on Berlin. He shall determine whether we shall be at war or peace. This is the key office. And I run for the presidency because, like you, I have strong ideas about what this country must do. I have strong ideas about the United States playing a great role in a historic moment. When the cause of freedom is endangered all over the world, when the United States stands as the only sentry at the gate, when we can see the campfires of the enemy burning on distant hills, that's what's at issue today. That's what we are attempting to determine. In the coming months and years, all of us as Americans are going to be called out of the ranks. Our courage is going to be tested. And I am confident that we are going to give the same affirmative answer. That's what I think this election is about. That's what we're going to begin to do on next Tuesday. Thank you.